Hello and thanks for watching this video. My name is Marvin Munzu. I'm the managing director of Pre-Reg Shortcuts. So um, this is the third video update for provisional registered pharmacists. In this video as well, there's a lot of information for pharmacists that may be working with provisionally registered pharmacists. So here's what we're going to cover very quickly in this video. We're going to look at the criteria to practice as a provisional registered pharmacist, the roles provisional registered pharmacists cannot perform, um, advice before starting work for provisional registered pharmacists, tips on deciding where to work, what sort of support is available for provisional registered pharmacists, and um, assessing your work arrangement, being transparent whilst you're at work, and also um, some information on seating the registration assessment. So the aims of this video is just to provide you key information to practice safely and effectively as a provisional registered pharmacist, and also just general information for pharmacists about the role and the limitations of provisionally registered pharmacists. So the first thing we'll look at is the criteria. So what criteria do you need to meet in order to practice as a provisional registered pharmacist? So um, you must be employed directly by the organization or business in which you are working. So make sure that you have a contract that you're employed directly by that organization or by the business. And this includes performing roles even as relief pharmacists or bank pharmacists. So the first thing you need to make sure is that you have um, a contract. Um, the second thing is practice under guidance and direction of a senior pharmacist. So it's vital that once you start working as a provisional registered pharmacist that um, you have a senior pharmacist that is there to support you. Um, the next thing is make sure that you have provisional um, professional indemnity insurance. So don't work without um, making sure that you have your indemnity insurance most companies will be able to arrange this for you. Um, you need to follow the GPH standards for pharmacy professionals, and you are able to work as a responsible pharmacist. So that's a lot of responsibility, but um, as a provisionally um, registered pharmacist, you can also work as the responsible pharmacist, or you could perform that role as well. So let's look at the criteria to work in a primary care setting. So in a primary care setting, the organization that's employing you must also employ a senior clinician who is a registered healthcare professional. This could be um, a PCN, a primary care network clinical director, or a GP partner who is responsible for the safe delivery of services. And also they must employ a senior pharmacist with at least two years in the sector experience that will be responsible for providing you guidance and direction. So make sure, as I said before, that you have all of these things in place before you work as a provisional registered pharmacist. Uh, now let's look at the roles you cannot take or the roles you cannot do as a provisional registered pharmacist. So the first thing is you cannot be a superintendent or a chief pharmacist. So these are roles that you cannot take. Um, you cannot also work as a locum pharmacist. So you can't work as self-employed locum pharmacist or um, have just have a contract or an agreement with um with a locum agency and the reason why is because um, the gpc needs to ensure that wherever you work um, a risk assessment has been done by that employer so it's just a way to um, safeguard and make sure all the criteria is met for wherever you work all right so before you start working there are certain things that you must be aware of and the certain things that please before you start working you need to also ensure that these things are in place for you. So the first thing is your employer has to, they must carry out a risk assessment. So do not start working as a provisional pharmacist without having a risk assessment. So make sure you do ask your employers for the risk assessment. Um, you need to also have your evidence of learning. So have um, your learning portfolio. The reason is because your employer would like to um, understand or try to see what skills and the knowledge you've developed over the past year at least. So have um, your learning portfolio so that you can show what sort of skills and what sort of competences you have to perform certain tasks. Um, provisional pharmacists well are able to provide the same services as fully registered pharmacists. So you are able to provide those services as long as you are competent, you've done the right training, right? you have the right skills 
for those services you can provide those services as any normal um, fully registered pharmacist so next thing we'll look at are the tips on deciding where to work so if you've not chosen a place yet to work these are some tips that you can apply to decide what pharmacy to work for or what um, company organization to join okay so the first thing you want to do is check that you are very clear about the role and the responsibility that it involves so whatever organization you're going to work for you need to make sure that you totally and clearly understand what your role will be so for example are you going to be working as the responsible pharmacist so this is a, a different role with different responsibilities so you need to make sure that you know exactly what role you're going to be performing the second thing is you need to consider how that role that you're going to be performing how it um outlines how it matches to your competency so um, consider how the role aligns with your current scope of competence so are you competent for the role have you got enough training for it have you got the skills and the knowledge before you start doing it because you will be responsible and liable for that role and for everything that is done during that role so um, make sure that you understand the support that is available to you so you can normally get this from your employers so make sure once you start work you need to confirm that with your employers you need to find out who will be responsible if you have any concerns what sort of support is there for you before you start working and then finally this is very important because many um, provisional pharmacists if you don't do this at the beginning you might struggle later on so you need to have an agreement with your employer and you need to arrange when you're going to have study time to prepare for your registration assessment it could get very busy at work and this could make it hard for you to have time to study but unless you proactively take um you proactive about speaking to your to your tutor or your organization make sure that this is factored in your learning time as well so next thing we're going to look at is the support arrangement so what sort of support is there for you so for um, provisional registered pharmacies, we have um, the first support is practicing under the guidance and the direction of a senior pharmacist. So I mentioned this at the beginning that you need to have um, a senior pharmacist that will be responsible for guiding you and giving you the support that you need. This pharmacist has to be contactable at all times. So you should be able to contact them. This could be by email, by telephone, video call any sort of method but um, you need to be able to contact them and if for example they are on holiday then there has to be someone an alternate or alternate person that you can contact so um, do make sure that you have this in place that you know exactly who your senior pharmacist is and also what you need to do if they're not available um, the next thing is signpost, um, signposting to training and development so you have a lot of support in terms of and opportunities to um, learn new skills and this could be through courses um, put by professional bodies so any sort of training that you can do to further enhance your skills and also help um, you also get help from other so um, other networks so for instance help to develop your own peer support network so it could be um, help with a group of other um, provisional registered pharmacists or your pre a previous tutor you've had or some university contacts or just some national and local pharmacy networks so there's a lot of support in joining other networks with other provisionally registered pharmacies so next thing we're going to look at is um, assessing working arrangements for provisional registered pharmacies so in terms of assessing um, your working arrangements the GPHC will check to make sure that the requirements which they have set out for employers are being met so whilst you're working the GPH is going to continue to do checks and this could be some inspections but they need to make sure that um, the employers are meeting all the requirements which they have um, of employing provisionally registered pharmacists at the same time the GPH will also um, check to make sure that you're being well developed and if you have any concerns you could also let them know through service you're going to have regular service by the GPHC and that's just to check to make sure your employers are meeting the requirements the next thing we're going to look at is being transparent about your provisionally registered status so um in sometimes some occasions you may need to explain your status to service users as not all service users are 
aware of this, where many service users will not be um, aware of provisionally registered pharmacies. So for example, if you have a very complex problem that you're dealing with, and perhaps you need to refer to the senior pharmacist, then you have to explain to this patient that you are a provisionally registered pharmacist, so you need to refer to a senior pharmacist. So in some circumstances, you may um, have to explain your status to service users. Um, if you're working as a responsible pharmacist, you need to make sure that this is displayed um, in the pharmacy, which is a regulation, but um, it has to be, your notice has to state that you, um, you are provisionally registered. So you have to print out the provisionally registered pharmacist notice, and that's what you have to display it in the pharmacy if you are working as the responsible pharmacist. So, um, so next I'm going to look at is um, being open and honest when things go wrong. So um, you need to be able to speak up. Feel, uh, you need to feel confident that you can speak up when you have any concerns or when things go wrong. So you're part of the team. You are a provisional pharmacist with a lot of responsibilities and you should feel confident. You should feel fine to be able to speak up if you have any concerns or things go wrong. And your organization should be able to tell you where to raise your concerns or who to speak to if you have any concerns. So you need to know who to contact in your organization to raise any of these concerns. For example, staffing issues. So if you're working and you don't have enough staff or maybe staff have called in sick, so that's quite common in pharmacies where you have less staff due to different reasons or unforeseen circumstances. If this happens, you need to know um, who to contact in your organization. You need to um, understand and implement systems and processes to identify, resolve, and learn from incidents and complaints. And any concern that may be raised um, by other service users or by other patients or, say, other colleagues about you, if any concerns are raised, um, these concerns will be dealt with in the same way as the GPHC deals with other pharmacy professionals. So any concerns that are going to be uh, raised against you will be dealt with as other concerns with other pharmacy professionals. So the um, final part is um, sitting the registration assessment. Um, at this point, I'm um, doing this video, we still do not have a date yet when um, the registration is going to take place. But what we do know is that there will be an assessment exam. So um, the advice is you need to sit to this exam at the earliest if you're fit to do this. Okay. So it's to your benefit that you do this exam as soon as possible if you're able to or if you're fit to do the exam. So at the moment, you're going to be provisionally registered until July 2021. So for one year, you have a provisional register license for one year and you will have to sit the exam during this time and pass the exam in order to be registered beyond this date. So you literally have one year where you work as a provisional registered pharmacist and during this year, you need to sit the exam, you need to pass the exam in order to practice beyond um, July 2021. Um, the assessment is very vital and it's a vital part of assessing your ability to practice as a pharmacist. So the GPHC um, will definitely um, do the exams and they will provide the date, um, the moment when this um, is known. But um, all the information about the assessments will be published very soon. The GPHC said this will happen this summer, so we're expecting to at least get some information about this in the next weeks or in the next few months. Um, in terms of other useful resources, I've just put on a slide a snapshot for you. So there's a list of resources that you can access to get more information. And um, I've got all of these here for you. So you could go through these and you could check some of these websites and log into some of these links. And any more information you need, you could access from all these useful resources. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you, this video has been helpful. Please like the video if you found this video helpful or if you've learned anything in this video that you think may be benefit of you to you, please like the video. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to get more regular updates. And finally, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video. And this is a link for provisional registered pharmacists as well as any pharm um, pre-reg pharmacists that will be taking the assessment. 
um, you could join our free mailing list. It's a free list. And once you join this list by clicking on the link, you will receive um, daily clinical and calculation questions that are going to help you to prepare for your assessment. So thank you so much for um, listening. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this video has been helpful. All the best in your exams. All the best in your provisional registered pharmacist year. And um, look out for future updates. Thank you. Bye.